and love is just a state of mind. 30 seconds. No, love is a state of mind. It was just a... Uh, to say that anger is just a love, it's a wine They say that love is just a state of mind. Until we love one another. Are you here for the next one, Daniel? I don't know, I might throw them on if uh, we get a phone call or something. Thirteen twenty AM, WCPG, Covington, Cincinnati, and thirteen twenty thevoice.com. This is the voice of Cincinnati. Yeah. Okay, let's be great. Okay, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Facebook Live. Thank you guys for watching. Y'all are awesome. We're gonna dive into the word, talk to some guests, and get closer to God today. Thank you very much for uh, for watching, tuning in. All that good stuff. Nah, let it ride for me. Whatever you want to do. All right. If you're listening to 1320 AM WCBG The Voice, this is another episode of OK Let's Be Frank. I'm Kay. This is Frank. Hey. <laughs> oh, man, we turn up in here, man. <laughs> super cool, super awesome. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, our radio show uh, has been doing really well, and that's uh, strictly attributed to our listeners and watchers. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, we are the uh, real, raw, and relevant reality radio show. Yes. It's a lot of <laughs> a lot, lot of ours. A lot of ours. <laughs> yes. so, like that Blake Naslin. <laughs> right. Anywho, uh, we just like to thank everybody for, for listening in and getting your weekly dose of devotion. Um, we had a lot of a lot of things happen this week. Uh, this is our first Wednesday here at WCVG. Yeah, woo -woo. Um, we've added. We are on Mondays, eleven to twelve, eleven a.m. to twelve p.m. And we just added Wednesdays. Now we are on from twelve to one on Wednesdays. So we really appreciate you guys uh, continuing to give us feedback and showing your support. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, uh, we would also like to extend uh, a huge thank you and all of our graciousness to everybody who has prayed for Kay and her family through this difficult time. If you don't know, uh, Kay lost her father uh, a couple of days ago and uh, is dealing with, dealing with all that. So uh, we, we appreciate you uh, for all that you've done, said, well wishes and support as far as that goes. True. Um, Anyway, I guess we're just going to dive on in. We do have a special guest coming in today, uh, but until then, we just want to want to get into some things that have been on my heart. Uh, my buddy uh, hit me up the other day and said that uh, he had he had some some concerns about the modern day church, which uh, I, I can see where he's coming from, and I totally get it and I totally understand. Um, today's topic: we're going to discuss uh, greed. And how that pertains to to church, uh, the modern day church, uh, mostly. So uh, my buddy's concern was how the the pastors and leaders of a church how they are looked upon by the congregation. Um, a lot of pastors like like uh, of course we all like nice things, you know. We, we like to wear nice clothes, and drive nice cars, uh, but when you are a leader in a uh, Nonprofit organization, and you are driving a Mercedes or a Lexus or anything like that. Um, it tends to bring bring up some questions. Um, so, with that being said, um, on the flip side of that coin, um, God blesses His children. So, anytime that you put yourself aside for the graciousness of God and to build his kingdom, he is going to bless you. Right. Um, how, whatever that looks like. I can't say that it's going to be monetarily. I can't say it's going to be materialistic, but I can't say that it's not going to be either. Um, so we're going to kind of dive into that and just kind of see um, thoughts and feelings and, 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 and those types of things. Uh, we got a camera person in here today, maybe running around. So just keep that in mind. Right. <laughs> um, so, um, so Miss Kay, let me let me ask you first. Um, 
Yeah. You've been a. <laughs> I love to put her on the spot, man. <laughs> well, you gave me a little bit of a heads up on this one. And I have a very strong opinion already ready I, I for you. I bet you do. I bet you do. That's why we're put together, man. She she talks and I listen. More it's often. not always that way. <laughs> Anywho. Anywho. So as it pertains to um, to pastors and leaders of the modern day church and them having things or flaunting things, um, I don't think let me let me first say I don't feel like I've never seen a, a pastor or a leader flaunt their material things or, you know, kind of put it in people's faces or, you know, um, I've been a part of four or five churches, like really a part of in depth in the mix of, of, uh, of churches. And I've never seen a pastor or a leader flaunt again, uh, what, what they have or whatever I've, Heard them speak of blessings and how blessed they are and certain things like this. Um, but, again, on the flip side of that coin, from the con congregational standpoint, um, they give tithes. Tithes, and tithes to the church. So, um, okay, uh, give, me, give me your perspective uh, on, on this issue. First thing, first thing, boy, I'm ready to chime in. First thing is, what is tithes and what are they for? First of all, first and foremost, what is your opinion or what your knowledge of tithes are and what are they for? And second of all, is it a church that is in a denomination that has district affiliations that is much bigger than just an independent church or non-independent church? Third question I would say is, is you need to think about your heart as a congregation perspective and you being jealous because that's what it is, is jealousy over what the pastor can or does or does not have. If you're worried about what they have, it's a jealousy thing, in my opinion. Now, the reason I say these things is the pastor of my church we are a district church. We have several churches on our district. My pastor is paid through the church. He is a paid pastor. I do not know what he um, makes, but I know he's paid pastor, and he's also the secretary for the district. Therefore, how that many churches, means... How many churches are in the district? You know? There's like 15 in our district. So, um, he's the secretary for the district. So, he's getting paid for that as well. Then, then on top of it, so he was, he's not a bivocational pastor. Some, some pastors are bivocational pastors, which means they hold a secular job and a pastoral job. And then some pastors just hold the pastoral job. In Pastor Lonnie's case, he owns the pastoral job with the secretary of the district position as well. But his wife always, has always worked, has always worked. And for the first 15 years of his pastoral ministry, she was a court reporter. So you can't just put, oh, we put these tithes in and look what they have and not know the whole story, not know the whole situation not know the whole scenario. So what if they have a Mercedes? Okay, that means at some point they were very good stewards with what God has given them. They've kept their credit where it needs to be. Most of them have a parsonage that they get to live in or could live in if they didn't own their own home. So therefore they don't have that out because the church does take care of that. Can you explain what a parsonage is? That kind of threw me through a loop there. For that part. What? It's the house. <laughs> the church owns a house. So the church gives them a house, so they don't have house expenses because the church is paid. Don't have rent or house payments. Gotcha. So that, right. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Right. That yes. could be a Mercedes payment. Exactly. <laughs> I hear you. Exactly. I hear you. So that's just, you're saying that's that's kind of just part of the job. Right. Uh, when you decide to go in this ministry, um, that some churches do do that. I, I, I get what you're saying. I, what you're saying. I mean, 
So I get to see it from the inside because my husband is an associate pastor at our church. For the past two churches that we've been in, we've been into the business side of church. Church is not just a building that you go praise and somebody comes in and preaches to you or Sunday school teachers teach you. Church is also a business. Unfortunately, it is still a business. And there still are business things that have to take care of. And in some cases, the church has enough money to take care of it because they have a leader that they need to pay. And then in some cases, the churches don't have it and they do it out of the love of God, period, until the church can. And I say that because right here at our sister church in Newport, Kentucky, they don't have the money to pay the pastor. So the pastor has his outside secular job and he comes in and he pastors and he shepherds his sheep all he needs to, but the church ain't paying him to do what he's supposed to be doing or what the congregation expects him to be doing. You better start looking at your own hearts is no, all I can say. True, true. And uh, I mean, it, it brings up a good point. I mean, it's honest. I, I hadn't thought about all that. I, mean, I know that, you know, my father being a, a Baptist preacher, we always had small little churches. So, I mean, for him to get like a preacher uh, wasn't really a thing, you know, um, more often than not. Now, listen, with every occupation, with everything in life, you have your good eggs and you have your bad eggs. <laughs> you know I, what mean, I mean, right. You're going to have people that are in it for the fame, the fortune, all this bunch of stuff. Um, and God looks at those things. We, we've had a couple of conversations on, on this exact thing because you know when you talk to somebody if their heart is pure or not, or what their motivations are, all this bunch of stuff. Um, but what Ms. K opened my eyes to was that does it really matter what somebody's motivation is? If they are speaking about God and speaking some goodness and hope into somebody's life and that happens to change somebody's life for the better, does it matter who the originators or what the originators' motives were? God's going to look at that. Exactly. He's going to take care of that. Exactly. Maybe it's not you to be the judge. Right. Right. And uh, that's that's something that we all need to take a look at. Is like, as far as in, in my opinion about this whole greed thing is, as if I'm sitting in a congregation and I'm sitting here worried about how much the pastor's making. Or where my where my twenty bucks, fifty bucks, hundred dollars, whatever. If I'm worried about where that's going, why am I sitting in that spot? Why am I taking up that seat? Obviously, I'm there for me and and, and to be a judge and, and to like I'm going to regulate something. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to be like, oh, wait a minute, but you need to you need to blah 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 with this money. The fact of the matter is, the tithe money is your obedience to God, period. Right. Um, the Bible says, I think, and this is funny, because I'm sitting there trying to find it in, in the Bible where it's at. I could have swore I read somewhere that the tithe was like 8 point something percent of your weekly income. I thought we just rounded up for easy math. Yeah, I think <laughs> to, it's, to 10%. No, I, I think it, it, it is 10%. I typed in tithe. Anyway, um, we're, we're supposed to give 10% uh, of, of your annual or your weekly income. And what do you think that's for? I mean, for real, because God don't need your money. No, it's for obedience. Right. It's from the love of your heart of wanting to do so, for one, and for two, to upkeep this building that everybody thinks they have to stay in. Well, that, that, was, my, that was my next thing, was <laughs> where do we think, you know, the reason that we do tithe and the reason that there is a person in front of you speaking, both of those are out of obedience to God. Right. Period. Right. Um, now that's the way that it's supposed to be. Is it like that always? It's not. The man, the man or woman that is standing in front of you speaking, may not always be there for just the purpose of spreading the news and all that. But that's what it, what it's supposed to be. I, as a child of God, trying to grow in my faith, cannot worry about that. Right. Um, I look at the. Uh, I used to use this analogy all the time. If God, let's say God is basketball. All right. If I'm going to go to the court to play basketball, there's going to be people there who can dunk. There's going to be people there who 
only shoot layups. There's going to be people who shoot three-pointers. There's going to be people who just pass the ball and play defense. There's going to be people watching on the sidelines. If I go to the court, I'm going to get my exercise and work on my game. If I can't dunk, I shouldn't be trying to dunk. I shouldn't be looking at the next man trying to dunk. Um, I should only be there for my exercise. So if if we are worried about what this man or woman is spending this money on or how they get paid or what all is going on behind the scenes, why are you why are you there? You're, right. you're there you for the wrong reasons. Focused. You were there for the wrong reasons. You were supposed to be there to work on your game. And get your exercise. Right. Um, change your focus. Yeah, change the focus for sure. And if and if you can't find what you need, if you're not being fed, if you can't get the focus off of that, then find another church to go to, one that will feed you. Now, I'm not just saying just dump and leave churches. I'm saying if you're not getting fed, if you're not getting filled, if you if you go to church and every Sunday it just nags you that the pastor drives a Mercedes and you can't get over that own hurdle, then maybe that's not the place you need to be anyway. Maybe you need to find somewhere else to go. Well, and, and but the thing about it is, and I mean, I, I understand your point. My thing with that is, is there's going to be a pastor down the road that may be driving a Lexus. They may be driving a BMW. Um, the kid may have his entire school paid for. No, and, and are you going to wonder why this this person down the road? I just left the church like this. No, I no, just blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Like, are you going to wonder? Is is this the same situation? Is this the same? No, but and see, that's the thing. That's I, I knew you were going to say that. So this is where I have to come back and say, right, that may be the situation. They may have a Lexus or whatever, but maybe the pastor with the Lexus is a better teacher. Maybe he's a better feeder. Maybe he has the words, as we were talking about Monday, to be able to put the words to where you understand and relate better. Maybe that person has that and is feeding you that, where this one didn't. Not that it was wrong, it's just their teaching style, their preaching style didn't feed you. This one did. Well, and that, that's what I'm getting at, is that the focus can't be on what they're driving. Because if one's driving a Beamer and one's driving a, a Lexus, I'm going with the Lexus. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not about the car that they drive. It's right. about the teaching style and right. where, where God's talking to you. Right. Uh, my um, children's mother, she went to a certain church uh, around here, and I go to another. So when we, when I first come up here, I went to hers, and it was cool. There was a show and, and all this, and it was a, it was a feel good message, and uh, uh, you know I felt great leaving, uh, but. Uh, so she came to my church. Um, she said that she really didn't feel fed there, you know, and I didn't really feel like that I was fed or really had anything to think about at the place that I went that she likes to go to. And so as we talked about it, it just really came down to where are you getting fed? The whole point is to build the kingdom, go out and make disciples. But in order to do that, you have to be fed with the word. So if you're not getting fed, it's not, don't just go to just go. Don't go to some place to analyze. Right. You're supposed to go with an open heart and an open mind to get fed. So we can go out into the world and build the kingdom. Um, so like we, we came to the conclusion, like, if you're getting fed over here, that's where you need to be. You don't need to come to me, come with me and, and show force or whatever. God sees your heart. Well, and you know what I mean. So I don't need to go there. I don't. You know what I mean? Because y'all weren't together at the time, though, right? Um, we were at that point. You were at that point. We were at that point. Um, well, so really, really and truly, God don't want his people split up like a man and wife, girlfriend, boyfriend that are in a serious commitment. They don't want. He don't want them split. He wants them going to the same church. He wants them together. They're supposed to grow together. They're supposed to love together. So if the church don't fit both of you, then you find one that fits both well, of you. Well, I see, I see now, what you're saying. Now, with that said, just for a second, with that said, Terry Baxter <laughs> plays at our church, plays bass, stays at our church the whole time. His entire family goes to the other church down the road. 
So in order to keep his family together in Christ, he does what he does at our church, and then he goes to church with them when he's done. No, I hear that, and the, the Bible speaks about being equally yoked, and that's that's so true. Um, just a backstory for us, though, like we had been split up for some time, um, and she had started going to this other church. Well, then when I had moved closer, uh, when I had moved up here, um, that's when I had visited that church, and I just didn't feel it there. And then so my buddy, Mr. Taiwan Shanklin, uh, <laughs> he had invited me to come to this church. And before I had left Owensboro, um, I had a bunch of people, not a bunch of people, but like my mentor and the family and whatever, um, they, we had prayed and all this that I found a church that was biblically rooted and spiritual, you know, and so I was visiting churches before I committed to one, you know. Right. My children's mom had been here for a while and established in right. this place. So when we decided to try to work things out again, I had already kind of committed to this one church. And through that, through finding God again and all that and trying to rekindle our relationship and all this, there was already two places established. Right. So like I, I totally get your point. I think you're I think you're completely right. But just a little backstory as to why we were uh uh, in separate places. Well, um, and and that's that's what I mean. I feel like thing it, too it is y'all be... had already been split anyway, and you were trying to redo it. And just that, in my opinion, is more confirmation that y'all probably shouldn't have been. Because if it had been together, if that was their plan, if that was God's plan and not Frank and her plan, then I just don't want to be rude. Um, but I think I was anyway. So, but anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Her, if that was his plan, he would have. It would have. It would have matched. Y'all would have found it together. I mean, I think, I, I think you're right. Again, and it, but again, like it all boils down to, it's a heart thing and not a place thing. Right. And, and uh, I don't think even then, our hearts were truly committed to God at that point. You right. know, we were trying to figure it out. We were right. trying to find it. And in the midst of trying to fix a situation um, and still not really putting him first in that, mm -hmm. um, that's really what kind of uh, led to the ultimate breakup. You know what I mean? And, and the, the church thing kind of played, it, it played into it, and we really should have listened to that more, I think. Uh, you know, I really never thought about that until we just sat there and talked about it. Um, we really should have really should have listened to that, you know. But um, when you're in the midst of of things like that, um, you don't you don't really think about it, you know. You don't really see what God is really trying to say. Like I'm trying to fix it. Oh well, I need right. to do this or I need to do that, you know. And that, right. that's what it means, like dying to self. Yep. Um, that's that's hey, listen, Kay. Listen. Yes, sir. Yes, saying, sir. Hey, now, hey, now. <laughs> Wow. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. But no, right. right. I you're mean, totally, I don't know. Totally right. I think it's so funny because because our our relationship, your and my relationship, is one of those that just we we challenge each other to think about things differently, and which in turn it is all a God centered challenge to think of it in in a different term which I think has helped us to grow and be better people, period. Well, and that, see, that was one thing that I was, I was going to lead into as far as when we talk about greed. Greed is not only has to do with money and things and stuff like that, but our relationships, our feelings and those right. types of things. And I thought I was really doing a good thing by not being greedy with, hey, come with me. You need to come to my church. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> not being like that. Like, I thought I was doing a good thing. You know, because I really feel that. If right. you're not getting fed at a certain place, you don't need to be there. Right. I, I, I truly think that that's right. But to listen to what God's really saying in that moment. Right. That just, you just really smacked me in the face with that. Like, <laughs> honestly, like, if there is not a willingness to grow together and to learn together, wow. Right. Hey, listen. Preach it, girl. Yeah. Listen. I mean, <laughs> you've got to be able to do so. And, and, you know, the reason why I guess I can be and feel so strongly about it is because four years ago, uh, we've dealt with this. I personally dealt with this. We were in the church in West Union. We were together in West Union. I 
God told me long before he told Ken, I guess, that I had to get, I had to go, it's done, it's over, I'm not getting what I need, you need to go on about your business. I went on about my business. That was the worst four months in church I had ever spent because I went here, Ken went here, and we were not together. We were not being fed together. We were not growing together. We were not loving together. We were separated during church. That was terrible. Then when Ken finally gets the lot, oh, hey, yeah, I need to get out of this situation that I'm in, this church, and I need to find one with my wife and my child. Then we went through a struggle of, oh, now what do we do? Where do we go? How are we going to do this? And then God said, okay, go to Maysville. Like he told me, go to Maysville. I told Ken, let's go to Maysville. No, 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 no. Go to Maysville. No, 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 no. So then I had that struggle. How, how do you say it? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> So anyway, um, so anyway, shut sorry, up, go ahead. Go, I'm sorry, go um, ahead. when I finally got <laughs> no, him to no. go, <laughs> I finally got him to go with me. I did. And we have been there ever since. That's home. That's where we belong. God has moved in so many ways for us in that church. So anyways, we've been there for three years. And plan on being there until you know. Just do your part. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. That's so crazy. And we talked a couple of weeks ago about about relationships and and what it means to have a firm foundation in, in Christ. So I mean that plays right into that. So um, you know, to not be greedy with church and, and your relationship with, with with God is one thing, but what that really means is to grow together. You know, you're supposed to teach each other, you know, it's so funny. We talked about, if you it. don't grow together, you're going to grow apart, right? You're going to grow. You're going <laughs> to grow. You, you can't stop yourself from growing. You're going to grow. Right. And if you don't do it together and if you don't fight to do it together, then you're going to grow apart. I mean, that's, that's very true. It's very true. Uh, what we were talking about the other day, uh, everything that you have to do, you have to build anything that that's going, to be good and going to be a blessing, a relationship, work, whatever, you have to build it. Um, so it's easier to do it with a partner <laughs> for sure. Right. But if you if you really value that relationship and, and you really care about somebody, I think um, that's, that's really what it boils down to. Uh, so many times now we jump into situationships. Right. And, uh, <laughs> Situation. Well, well, because yeah. of because of lust, more often than not. I mean, everything. More often than not, relationships, situationships go back to the lust factor. Um, no thought of really growing or whatever, and then we get upset with each other because you you're not what I thought you were, or you don't believe the same things I believe, or this, that, and the other. Instead of thinking about, hey. Let's grow this. You know what I mean? Our firm foundation is our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stand on that solid rock and let's build a home. You know, not a house. You know, what we say the other day, everybody wants a wedding, nobody wants a marriage. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, and I think, I don't know, especially probably in today's society, because marriage has been so, like we were talking just a while ago, where they're not going to put my dad's wives on his thing because there was too many. Okay, so... We've grown up in, in situations and in families where marriage is disposable and it's not meant to be disposable. But with that said, talking with my pastor and his, and his wife, talking with Amy, she, she's like, you're not always going to like each other. It's not going to happen. The deep love is always going to be there if you really love them. But you're not always going to like them. There is going to be a stint in your relationship where you don't like each other so much. Now, she's been married for 35 years, so she should know a little bit. Because she said, I haven't always liked Lonnie. But the love is there. Right. So, if you love somebody, and you really love somebody, and your foundation is on the Father then you're going to find a way to work yourself into liking that person again. 
because you like that person enough to give yourself to that person. It's true. I mean, it's, it's very true. Very true. And, and a lot of that comes from not being greedy with your emotions. Um, when you have an issue or a problem that is driving you apart, again, this greed thing is way more than just monetary. Right. Uh, if, if you get upset with somebody, and especially if they're your significant other, you can't be greedy with your emotions or your feelings at that point. Well, they're, they're not going to understand. Well, no, they're not if you don't express and them. Especially if you don't express you, them. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so when it, when it comes down to, to the church and, and all this, there are people that you can talk to. Most, most churches, uh, most, most Christian entities have people that you can call and talk to. Um, uh, they have small groups you can join and those types of things, too, if you don't know how to express um, to help you through that. Right. The, the fact of the matter is you cannot be greedy. You cannot be greedy with your emotions. And, and the selfishness is just going to drive further division. Right. You don't want, you get with somebody to be with somebody. You don't get with somebody so you can hang on to them for a little bit and let them go because they don't like, because you don't like something about them. Like you said, nobody's perfect, and there is going to be a point of time. If you spend any amount of time with anybody, there's going to come an amount of time where you don't like each other. Paul and I have been best friends for over 25 years, you know. Um, there were points in time where we about fought each other, you know, and had some knockdown drag outs, you know. Me and my cousin have been best friends my entire life. She's two years older than me. My entire life, she has been my best friend, my very best friend. There has been times that I wanted to kill her, and same with me. And she'll tell you I have the best kick in the world because I kicked her right in the chin one day. Mm. And sweet, sweet chin music. <laughs> oh, yeah, I watched it. Y'all like his WWE stuff. Sweet chin music over here. She was like, up the band. She's like, she's like, you may think she can't kick that high, but watch. She was standing flat-footed and right here square in the she's chin. Limber. <laughs> limber. So, but... We didn't always like each other, is my point. Right. No, I get it. And that's that's the thing. And for, for Paul and I, I'm sure in your situation, you had the little the little spat. You didn't talk for a couple of days or whatever. But one of you decided not to be greedy with your emotions anymore. Right. One of you decided to not be selfish with your uh, feelings and emotions. Right. You wanted – you realized that the relationship was more important than whatever the division was. Right. Um, and, and more often than not, it's just the time spent. And when when you go through a long period of time with somebody, she says, standing on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> when you go through a long period of time with somebody, you're not always talking about every single thing that goes on in your life. You know, you're not talking about that. Uh, you know, back in the day, the telemarketer that called at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, that woke you up so you didn't get enough sleep. You're not talking about the dog uh, crap that you stepped in when you got home after a long day of work last night. So those things also play into some division. Um, so sometimes, you know, the smack or the kick in the chin aren't always that person, all that person, but it's probably a culmination. Right. And so later on, once you do become ungreedy with your emotions and feelings, those things start to come out. And that's why, that's where you know that you are best friends because they help you through that. Right. You guys help each other, right? right? And you still talk to this day about, yeah. about yep. silliness, right? About silliness. Paul and I, man, he, uh, we talk about some crazy things. There, there was, a, I remember, <laughs> I remember there was a time that uh, we, we weren't, <clears throat> we had gotten into like a little argument or whatever. Cause I mean, we were spending every day, all day together, uh, going playing ball and all this and uh, us both being competitive. Um, you know, we'd get upset when we would lose and all this bunch of stuff. Well, uh, we got into a little spat and all this. Well, then um, shortly after that, we're, we had kind of reconciled or whatever. Well, his brother comes and knocks on the window. And uh, his brother had been, excuse me, had been a, an, uh, an altercation. And some things had come down. And, and all Paul said was, uh, or all Rob had said was, man, I need your help. And we both ran out there right away. And uh, so, in, in the end of things, uh, the greediness will subside, but you have to allow it. You have to not be so greedy with your feelings and emotions. 
Man, we got a lot going on today in the studio. Yeah, there's, man. A lot of stuff. there's a lot of movement. I had to plug my computer in. So it's a good thing the radio can't see us, right? That's true. That's true. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs> anyway, so uh, dealing with this greed thing, um, let's go to, I want to read Luke 12, 15. Uh, and he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Now, covetousness means basically greediness. Um, the, the thought of, Wanting something for oneself is right. what covetousness means. So right. take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Right. King James Version, if you, do, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, like, be aware of... of when it the, says thou shalt not covet the neighbor's wife or whatever, he's not just talking literally about his wife. Period. He's talking about don't covet what other people have. Be grateful, grateful and satisfied with what you have, what he has given you, what he provides for you every single day. When you wake up in the morning, be grateful that you were able to wake up. That's what it means to not covet. It's very true, very true. And and whether there are so many things nowadays mm -hmm. that people take mm -hmm. now nowadays it's uh, people take more. Uh, there are more things to cut. I right. guess um, it's not just a car or a house or things like that nowadays. Right. Now with this whole social media thing, it's likes oh. and shares and exactly. subscribers and all this bunch of stuff. Um, it's one of the, especially once you get into media and this whole radio thing, like you will hear this. I've heard this way more than I want to. Um, but how many shares did you get? How, how many likes do you have? Well, I've got 20,000 likes. I've got so many followers, which is cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's cool. But to, to me, what I'm hearing is the exact same thing as, well, I drive a Lexus. What are you driving? Right. To me, that's the exact same thing. Right. You know what I mean? And, and I get that there's a whole, hierarchy and there's a whole process to to getting known and, and, and out eventually there one people. of these days we'll have that many too but the problem the thing is we have to stay humble about it stay humble well i mean like i i honestly i think it all goes back to if you're a humble person and, and you're you're doing this for, for god anyway that stuff's gonna come that stuff's right. gonna come what, what, what do they say love god and love people you put god first and foremost everything else will be given in, unto you in abundance right you know so uh right <laughs> to me it doesn't matter i have to get my heart right i gotta go work on my game i gotta go shoot a hundred shots every day right. to make sure i hit that bucket when it counts absolutely if, if the ball is in my in my possession at the end of the day at the end of the game i need to be able to hit that shot so that means if somebody's lost out here and i'm walking through the mall and i get a chance to talk to them they come up to me man what's different about you why are you so happy I better be able to make that shot. Right. And it ain't gonna matter how many followers I got. Right. At that at that point, the dude's not gonna come up you to me. You only have one that matters. That at that point, the dude's not gonna come up to me and be like, hey man, uh, I really wanna talk to you. But if you don't have <laughs> at least twelve thousand followers, um, I'm just gonna keep it moving. It's not gonna happen. So That's at the end funny. at the end of the day, I mean again, like I'm not down I'm not trying to downplay all that stuff. All that stuff is important uh, for, for media and, and for it has its purpose. Uh, but I think as far as, as this, this greed thing goes and what we're talking about, the point is to search your heart. If you are sitting in a congregation and you are listening to a preacher or listening to a teacher teach at Bible study or whatever, and if you are seriously worried about the car that they pulled up in, what vacation they went on, all this bunch of stuff, you have to check your heart. Right. At the end of the day, if I go out here and I give a drunk $5, do I need to worry about what he's going to spend it on? No, I need to worry about it. That's what God told me to do. Right. I'm blessing somebody else, regardless right. if they choose to or not. My mother blessed me with a ton of knowledge. They were some godly people. If I lived a godly life, not always. You know what I mean? Right. But they hand, they gave it to me. They right. gave me the option. Right. And I didn't, there's times that I didn't use that the way I should have. Right. You know, so the point God is, the you have to. Every day to live. Look what he's given all of us, all of us, the whole world. And he gives us that every time we wake up. 
we have a choice to what we're going to do with it. I mean, really, are we going to be the best we can be for God that day because you're not promised tomorrow and you can't change yesterday? Or are you going to be greedy, petty, selfish, grumpy? Choices. It's four of the seven dwarfs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> grumpy, grumpy, grumpy. No, man, it's so it's totally crazy. So, um, beware of covetousness. A man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things he possesses. Again, it's not the amount of things. It's not the the hierarchy of things. It's not, you know, like I, I can think back to to so many times. Just being happy, you know, you go to the dollar store and buy a coffee table. You know how happy I was putting that gum coffee table together? Like, I made a whole night of it. Went and popped some popcorn, put some music on. Like, I'm happy. Put up for that dollar store coffee table, you know, because prior to that, I didn't have one. That dollar store coffee table is still sitting in my apartment right now. You know what I mean? Sometimes those things that we overlook because we're worried about the next person. Right. Think about how much. No wonder people can't ex receive their blessings because so many people are putting them under their thumb and like, well, you didn't do this and you didn't do that or you don't have this or blah, 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 and being compared to the next person. Right. When God created you for a certain purpose, and right. instead of realizing what you are right. and what you're supposed to do, right. we all want to compare, right. well, you're not you're not them. Or you think T.D. Jakes is worried about Joe Osteen? No. Not a bit. Not a bit. Do, do they share the same thing? They share the same things. They both have wealth. They both have massive churches. They both are, are spreading the word of God. And they're both you know, in Texas. No. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I mean, we need, we need a, a, the Texas fight song to come on. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Just too good, old boy. Never made me no. No, but I mean, I understand. I do. I get it. And uh, no, it was like. But seriously, but at, at the same time, um, Pastor Lonnie. You think he's worried about T.D. Jakes? No. No. They have everything they need, right? Right. And they, and they are super happy and super blessed. You right. Know, that, and they're, they're kids. they got some great kids. Um, they're staying in their lane. They're doing what God told them to do. Right. Now, imagine if somebody came along when he was when he was doing his studying and, and started out teaching, and somebody was like, dude, this T.D. Jakes guy yeah. has got millions of followers. You can't even be in a church until you've got at least 100,000 followers. What do you think that would have done to his psyche? Right. The people that he's reached, that Lonnie has reached, how long has he been in ministry or at your church anyway? Uh, he's been at that church for eight years. He's been in ministry for like 30. So imagine if somebody hit him up 29 years ago and was like, bro, until you get 100,000 likes, man, you can't. Imagine all the people that he's affected in his 30 years. And if somebody would have compared him to T.D. Right. Jakes. Right, absolutely. It would have stifled ridiculous. everything he had to do. You right. Know? And how and many ministers does that's another thing too. Another a whole another thing is, is the congregation thinking things about the pastor or whatever. Do you know? Like, it's not something that most people wake up and go, "Oh, hey, I want to be a pastor because I want to be the one that everybody in my entire congregation invades on a twenty-four hour day thing." I have no privacy, and I have to bow down to all of them all the time. Do you think people wake up wanting that? No. Nope. No. Nope. They do it wants for the two reasons. Wants <laughs> two reasons. They do it because they love God and because he told them to. True. Period. Now, my, my pastors, and it trips me out. The reason I use the, <laughs> uh, uh, the, reason I use the uh, Mercedes Lexus uh, deal uh, analogy my pastors, Pastor Polly and Pastor uh, uh, Chuck Russell, uh, he drives a Mercedes, she drives a Lexus. Um, but you meet these people, you know there is nothing about them but God. It is right. super crazy, and you just know. So I don't go in that place wondering what they drive. I'm like, man, God bless you, bro. You know what right, I mean? Like, you right. might as well drive that car, you know? Right. And talking to him, find I come to find out, he only paid like $11,000 for a car. You know what I mean? So right. it's not even what we're right. thinking anyway. You know, right, it's not exactly. It's not what you think it it's is. It's not. It's really not. And, and to use my pastors as, as an example, um, he was telling a story this Sunday about how when God speaks, you move, and that's how you get blessed. 
he had offers to go and pastor big churches and, and be be known and, and possibly on TV and all this bunch of stuff. The stuff that people think is big time. But he said God told him no. Right. So he turned him down. You right. know, they're talking about him. And he said that the guy called me back and said, how much is it going to cost? What's it going to take? Basically an open checkbook to bring you down here to pastor my church. And he said, God said no. You know, like who would have done that? I can't even say that I would have done that. I'm sorry. I can't even say that I would have done that. But especially not having... I got ten dollars in my pocket. Well, <laughs> so, and you know what? Here's an open you know what? Sorry, that's why you have ten dollars in your pocket. <laughs> no, you're right. Because you're he's totally putting right. you through. He's putting you through that. No, he's true. putting you through true. what you need to grow. I hear you. Um, but with, with the story, um, so Pastor gave up these big churches to come and pastor down here in Newport, Kentucky. Right now. I can't tell you. They've been down here for about 40 years. I cannot tell you the amount of people who have been blessed by these people. Right. These people have put on. And, and listen, they drive those cars now. They weren't driving they those always, cars now. Right. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? They, like they, they weren't doing always. that. They bought a little bit of, little bitty piece of property with no money. They were fortunate enough to get like a little loan. Somebody took a chance on them. And God blessed that entire ministry. Right. Now they are blessed. Right. And so to come all the way back, when you see somebody, just like you said, when you see somebody pulling up in this or going on this trip or whatever, you don't know the whole story. You don't know the background. You don't know why God has blessed them uh, this way. And if you're not okay, even with that definition or, or that explanation, just know if their heart's not right, God's going to deal with them. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, I but mean, you right. have to think, again, at that point, if you're just not happy with whatever you're seeing, you need to look at your heart. Yep. You need to, to, to pray and be like, God, like what? I don't think that this is okay, God. Speak to me. Now, this doesn't mean like you ask God this and then turn the TV on and, and watch. What was I reading the other, the other day? It said, uh, no, I wasn't here. It was in another book. It said, God, why don't I hear you uh, in the mornings? And then uh, as you read on, it says it listed, the person had to list what they did throughout mm -hmm. the day. Mm -hmm. First thing you do, you roll over, you look at Facebook, and then you turn your TV on, and then you get up and you go brush your teeth, and then maybe somebody listens to the radio or whatever, and you start thinking about what you're going to wear, and then you check your email and all this. You may have woken up and asked God a question first thing. But you did not wait for the answer. Right. <laughs> you did right, not. You did. And then you get mad at God at the end of the day because, because your entire didn't day answer is messed you. up. Mm -hmm. Oh, he answered you. Oh, you, I know. You weren't, you weren't listening. listening. Right. <laughs> no, but that's what I'm saying. So they get mad at the end of the day going, God, you didn't answer me. You didn't do anything. You didn't blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was like what I, you know, posted it on Facebook too. No, yeah. 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 He does sit on your bed and wait for you to talk to you every single day. You're the one that don't talk to him. True. And think about, okay, so you ask him a question, think about this. Uh, especially yesterday, could have been a great example of that. Uh, maybe you ask him a question. God, what am I going to do about Christmas? Oh, man, you know, uh, maybe earlier in the year I was greedy with my money, but then maybe around August I started tithing and really wanting to get into your whatever. I'm just really not being blessed right now. Like, well, God, I'm doing what you told me to do or whatever. Why is anything happening? But you haven't sat down to rest to really listen. What about yesterday when everybody was stuck in traffic? What would you do? You pull out your phone and start scrolling? You look on Facebook? Did you comment on something because somebody made you mad? Did you, uh, did you turn up the radio because a good song came on? Or did you turn everything off and say, okay, God, I see what you're doing. I'm, I'm ready to listen now. Which one? You know what I mean? You can't be mad at him. You really can't. And that's what I mean. Like, we don't look inside ourselves enough. Right. Um, I posted something on Facebook earlier about why are our prayers different to ourselves than they are for our neighbors? Right. Well, why do we pray about grace and mercy and thank God? Oh, thank you for your grace. Thank you. Thank you for not giving up on me, blah, blah, blah. But then the next person who may have done some things in their past or done something against you, why do you not pray for them and their grace and their mercy? Right. Why are you always condemning and judging them? Right. You know, oh, he used to drink. He ain't, you can't trust him. He can't, oh, man, he's a flaker. He ain't never, he ain't never going to, whatever he's doing, it's blah, blah, blah. Wait a minute. That's two different prayers. 
right. it's two different things totally. Right. So where is your heart at really? Right. To me, that sounds like selfishness. Right. And only read it. How can I say that? I've done it. Right. <laughs> you know. <All> right. <laughs> I, I know that because I I catch myself when I'm like, Lord, like thank you for bringing me out of my mess. Thank you for giving me the spot, Lord. Your grace is good enough. Blah blah blah. Man, you're great. And then I meet somebody or I see somebody who, who's doing something that I may not approve of or not like, and I'm talking trash in my mind. That's not the same. It's not the same. So I got to look at my heart about that. Like, dude, he brought you out of your mess. How right. can he not bring somebody else out of their mess? All right. Yeah, <laughs> you know? He absolutely can. And maybe, absolutely will. maybe he's supposed to use you to get, to them, get out. them out of their right. mess. Because exactly. you know, but you missing, like I'm missing that, that blessing. Yep. Because I'm sitting there talking trash. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. So uh, that's that's kind of that's greedy. It that's, is. It's really it is. greedy. You know? it, it's very selfish ways of thinking. Very internal. Let let me judge others the way others have judged me, instead of let me judge others the way Jesus judges us. It's exactly, and it happens all the time. And it was just like I told you all ago on this way to the radio station. All this time, I wanted acceptance. I wanted acceptance. I wanted my parents to say, you did a good job. I love you. You've grown up into a beautiful person, blah, blah, blah. And what about a month ago, I said, I had a vision from Jesus that said, I'm all you need. I am your father, and I will take care of you. And it's it. Today, today, that has a whole different meaning than what it did to me last month. And last month, it blessed my heart totally. But today, it has a whole different meaning because both of my parents are gone. They will never be here to say, I accept you, I love you, and you did a great job. But it doesn't matter if they did anyway because he's the only one that matters whether or not I did a great job. And if you don't stop and sit down and listen and talk to him, then you're never going to know that he really does love you. Oh, Jesus, look at that. <laughs> jump up and down, man. I got to look. Wow. Woo. Hit that music. <laughs> hey, <you know? laughs> man, it's it's totally true. It's totally true. And, and I mean we could dive into a lot of a lot of different things as to why why we are in the spots we are and which is exactly where we're supposed to be and and all those things. Um uh, it, it's it's so true and you know um, really too as, so think about this too because this is something else that he's been like he's been doing a lot of talking i know he's been talking to both of us but something else he's brought to me brought through to me he says okay so you you want to tear yourself up for everything that you've ever done in your life all these bad mistakes that you've ever done and all this stuff and in the same breath you want to say but he knows me from before I was born. So he's known every single choice I was ever going to make from the very thought of conception to the very end of life. And you have to quit condemning yourself over things that you have messed up on because he already knew you were going to mess up. And he already knew that he was going to turn life around for you and that you were going to be the person he wanted you to be, period. That's why he went ahead and gave you life. True. True. Uh, and <laughs> well, it, it's so funny because if we, if we think about it, if we, if we go back and, and look at our lifespan, what has gone on in our life, we all say we get, we get stuck in the this, this, in this circle. Well, think about that circle. How many times has God left a way out of the craziness? Mm -hmm. He's given you a way out every time because his purpose is going to be fulfilled mm -hmm. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. He knew what he was going to do. Right. He knew how many times he was going to pass that exit. Yep. <laughs> he, knew, he knew what road he was going to be yep. on, but he kept you. He kept you together. You're still okay. You yep. know, people get oh so hung up on, oh, man, this is the worst thing ever and blah, 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 or whatever. It may be bad or it may be kind of crazy right now, but man, God's got you. It ain't the worst thing ever. You're not burning in hell. Right, right. That's the worst <laughs> thing ever. That's crazy. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Well, I wrote this down the other day. <laughs> Don't fear the calling of God has placed on your life. Um, resist the clutch the enemy is trying to have over your life. You don't have to be married to your misery. God has much more for you. 
the enemy has to learn to be around you, not the other way around. Right. <laughs> and it's such it's it's so true. In order for that to happen, we have to let go of our greed. We do. And we have to look at how many times the first thing, you know, in, in the in the AA classes they teach you the first thing is admitting there's an issue. Mm -hmm. And the second one is dying, you have to die yourself. You know, I, mean, I don't know if it's number two, but it's the most important. You get the right people. Sorry. <laughs> Um, that's the word before. but um, Terry Baxter, <laughs> when you uh, when you die to yourself, that's when the true breakthrough happens, right? And, and I've learned so so much here lately how selfish I really have been. You really think about how many times I say, I think, I want, I feel, you know, and you say those things without even a second thought, more often than not. Um, I was talking to a buddy, and he was like, "Well, why haven't you done this?" And I was like, "Oh man, well, I just, I just feel like this." One well, bond, he goes, "You what?" And I was like, "I just feel like he's like you what?" I was like, "Oh, <laughs> right. I felt that way." Right, and so I that's didn't turn why to God. I didn't ask him what he thought. That that's why they use the analogy of babes in Christ or versus growing up in Christ because babies are selfish. Think about it. Me, 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 me. <laughs> right. You know, change my diaper, feed me, take care of me, put me to sleep. It's all about me. Me, 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 me. So we can't stay babies in Christ. We have to grow up. You have to grow up. You're not staying a baby on earth. Why would you stay a baby in Christ? You have to grow up. True. That's true. Grow through what you go through. Right. <laughs> And, and go through it. Don't let, let it, go it go through, through you. you. For sure. For sure. That's super, super good advice. Um, it's so crazy when you, when you really go in depth to, to this greed thing. Um, people hear the word greed and automatically you think about money. Automatically yep. you think about stuff. But it's more than that. It's Wait, so more. much more than that. So um, much more. Your time. Think about how greedy we are with our time. It's so funny. <laughs> You call people, what, what did I tell you the other day? Like uh, the sermon I listened to, he said, uh, uh, grow in the Christ, read more, blah, blah, blah. You ain't that busy. You are not that busy. You tell people you're busy. You ain't that busy. You know what I mean? How efficiently are you using your time? Right. You know, um, some, some parents, you know, are too busy for their kids or whatever. If they really, if we really look at it, we've got time. We've got more than enough time, you know. And if Our, you really feel like you're too busy, then then you gotta check you some stuff out. Do something. You gotta check some stuff right. out. Um, it's you always sure don't want how God many to be times too busy for you. How many? Right. How <laughs> many times when when we lose a loved one? Man, I wish I had one more time. Man, yep. I wish I had some more time. But we say that, and then we leave the funeral home, or we leave the graveside, or whatever. And what we're doing? Scrolling on our phone. You know, or or calling somebody for some nonsense, or you know, people in addiction and alcoholism, they want to go and just throw a, get a drink or something. You know what I mean? People who are trying to hide it or whatever. It's just we have time. What are we going to do with the time that we have? Right. Yeah. Stop being greedy. Yep. Yep. Anywho, so hey man, uh, pretty good show today. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think so. I got to smack them out. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we really appreciate you guys watching and listening. Yes, um, we do. Again, we have two shows, Mondays 11 to 12, Wednesdays 12 to 1. Uh, we are on Facebook and um, Facebook Live. We're putting everything on SoundCloud. We have a YouTube page, OK, Let's Be Frank. It's OK, A-Y-E, Let's Be Frank. Come check us out. Um, tune in the weeks to come. I've got some some guests lined up that uh, I think you're really going to enjoy. Uh, I'm going to have uh, I think we're going to have a team week segment. Uh, some team leadership around the community is going to come in and give their testimonies and and what's going on in their lives and how God touches them. So well, that's cool. awesome. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, God's just moving. He's doing doing big things. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you to our camera woman, Miss uh, Kelly Prather here. You say hi. <laughs> <laughs> moving around, moving around. Somebody get a ripple or something. <laughs> like Castle Pop, hey, yeah, hey, hey, man. It, anyway.
Anyway, so <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for yes, watching thank and you listening. So much. We'll be back. Uh, what? Shout out to Jeff. Oh, oh yes, shout yes. out to Jeff. Yes, hey, yes, Jeff. Jeff. What's your yes. last name, Jeff? Eldred. Eldred? Mm -hmm. Jeff Eldred, the man behind the board, keeping us every, keeping y'all tuned in to the OK Absolutely. Let's Be Prank Show. Woo, thank, woo, you, Jeff, thank you, man. Jeff. Love you to death. Shout out again, WCVG, 1320 AM, The Voice. OK, let's be frank. Tune in next week. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Love you. That was a good show. That was real good.